Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the University of Michigan's Quantitative Finance and Risk Management Masters. So this was one of the two programs that made my 2022 honorable mentions, fancy quant, you know, basically quant masters program ranking here. And today I'm going to talk about why I think this program is so great and why it made the honorable mentions list. So Michigan's program got the math badge. So Michigan's program is very, very rigorous. It is very focused. And so just to start off with here, this program is based in what is called Literature, Science, and Arts, so LSNA at the University of Michigan. This is where the math department is located. This is really a math and stats focused degree here. There is a total of eight kind of core courses that you must take. Out of those eight, six of those are going to be math classes. Two are going to be statistics classes. So as you can see, it's going to be very focused on math and stats. And just to quickly go through the core courses for you, there's numerical methods with financial applications. There's stochastic processes, stochastic analysis for finance, financial mathematics one, financial mathematics two, computational finance, statistical learning one, regression, statistical models and methods for financial data. So the reason this is so good, the reason I like this program so much and not just because I went to the University of Michigan. No, I did not attend this specific program, but I love the University of Michigan for a whole variety of reasons. But one of those being, it is such a good school in all these different departments. The math department is top rated. The stats department is top rated. The finance and business school itself is top rated if you want to take those as elective. So it's very focused. It's very math driven. It's very heavily rigorous here. And I'll note here as well, so the University of Michigan provided this table here with the distribution of the different undergraduate degrees here with math undergrads making up 51% finance, 12% financial engineering, 12%. And you can look at the other ones on here and they put a little note on here too, which I liked. And I think this is a really insightful kind of piece here, depending if you have a finance degree and where you're from, they note here though, that those that have finance majors from countries like China uh, are considered because they take a specific amount of rigorous mathematics to be able to do the master's here. They are prepared for it. They have the knowledge to do this. It says on here that it's somewhat rare, basically, with just a pure finance degree from the U.S. However, there are some with finance degrees from the U.S., but they also typically have uh, advanced mathematical work, and often this is accompanied or kind of shown through like a math minor here. And out of these students here, 90% of them have undergraduate degrees and only 10% are going to have a master's degree before they enter this program here. So as I kind of preach and talk about a lot in the channel, you're taking undergrad students who are bright and brilliant individuals. Uh, they're going to be teaching them a mastery level education with math, stats, and computer science with a heavy focus on math. And these individuals will get kind of pushed through the program, educated and brought up to a higher standard. And I will also note here, as the program mentioned, um, often many of these courses in the math department, you'll be taking alongside math PhD students. So this is very rigorous. This is very graduate level focused. This is not a watered down, you know, professional degree here. Just to kind of go through this though quickly, the GRE score, um, the averages here is going to be quantitative at 169, verbal at 155.96, and the written is going to be 3.53. The incoming students themselves, around 80% of them are going to be coming directly from an undergraduate degree, so no work experience. And again, 20%, that 20% that has some work experience has an average of a year. So this again is a very academic focused uh, quant masters here. This is not going to be like a professional degree where you would have a bunch of work experience uh, before you join. And to get into the program, the things that they're looking at, the things that are being considered for the applications here for students are going to be one, academic transcripts, uh, again, they're looking for the advanced math courses and statistics. Overall, GPA is rarely consideration on its own. So again, they're really focusing on just people that have the, the prerequisites, that background in math before they can really get learning at a graduate level here. The second thing they look at is GRE scores, mainly the quantitative section. Three is letter of recommendations. Four is going to be a resume slash work experience and research experience if you have any from undergrad. And five is going to be your essays, so academic statement of purpose and personal statements here. These are all fairly standard kind of filtering processes for finding students that are well equipped to finish a master's degree and to learn in a program. Overall, they're about average in this sense. Nothing kind of sticks out here as a red flag. 
Uh, again, they keep looking at that consistency of they're really wanting really strong math students, turning these math students even into more highly qualified math students. And I hope one thing that really stuck out here with the core courses, as I mentioned, is there's a bunch of stochastic courses here. Okay, so the focus of this program is going to be very math heavy and math based. Uh, this is a perfect program to set you up for financial engineering. Uh, they say they are a general program. They cover general quantitative finance. But again, stats and math is the big heavy lifting of quant finance in general, but you'd be much better prepared to do derivative pricing and derivative products with a degree like this uh, compared to one who's more focused on the softer finance-y kind of sides of the industry. And I reviewed the textbook they used. I really like the textbooks. Again, I might post them below. Maybe I'll make a video and post some on different programs that are using. But I went through and looked at them. They have rigorous textbooks. They were not using any like... I don't know, flashy, exciting, fun publishers for the sake of doing so. Uh, the textbooks themselves are all fairly standard and industry-driven textbooks that you would expect to see. And finally here, the last kind of point I would like to point out here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about career services as well. But the one thing that makes this program unique as well is they have one industry practitioner. Often I like to see multiples, but they have a hedge fund manager who is doing a two-term elective machine learning and finance class or course here. And so it's going to prepare you for those new cutting edge topics a little bit. It'll get you at that front edge. A few of the students I talked to, so I did reviews as well, they mentioned that like there's an opportunity to get a machine learning certificate from the university as well. So this would just be one more thing you could add on the resume, take a little bit more of those data science machine learning electives and kind of you know set yourself up for success here as the industry is kind of transforming and moving towards data science and machine learning a bit more. And the biggest weakness here, so to cover this as the wrap up, the biggest weakness for Michigan is going to be their career placement, okay? They do have someone there that's kind of helping with, you know, job placement, resume writing, mock interviews, one-on-one -on -one career advising and whatnot. But they really need to kind of break out. And Michigan's downfall as well is that they're not located in one of these big financial hubs, right? They're not in New York City. They're not in Chicago. They're stuck between them. And so it's hard to find a lot of times, you know, jobs with just the sense of that you're trying to kind of get, you know, to one of these big cities to get those interviews and to build those relationships. And Michigan didn't provide me with the employment rate as well for the program, which is kind of an issue in itself. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. But I do understand, I do see what they're working on as a program. But again, that job placement, career placement is going to be the hardest piece here. Now, if you follow my general advice, which is, you know, education, 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 um, you can learn how to market yourself better through resume writing and all that. That's going to be the downfall of this program, though. It doesn't have like the world's greatest industry connections where it's just easy to place students left and right. And you just waltz in and say I'm from the University of Michigan. Uh, it just doesn't have as much of that brand recognition and I wish the program itself would actually do a bit more networking with companies and corporations, especially if you have alumni in these firms, try to keep those relationships built or reach out to people like me who are industry practitioners who actually do hiring. Um, I would love to get involved in programs more so, but that's the big downfall of the program is just the career placement. As you can see, academically, it's, you know, it's, it has an industry practitioner. It's working on the machine learning and data science opportunities. Uh, the courses are quite rigorous. You're going to be taking courses alongside math PhDs, as I mentioned before. So overall, it's highly rigorous. It's highly math focused. It's going to prepare you well for the industry. The only downside, though, is you're really going to have to try to figure out how to grapple and put together some of the career services here. Um, again, you can find YouTube channels like mine. We've talked about careers and resume writing, but it just doesn't have that cutting edge career resources that some of the other larger quant master's programs have. So... Anyways, that's my take. That's why they were rated as one of the top programs here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.